Now, very rarely do you actually want to type things directly into this console window, although I do use R as the calculator on my computer um, because it's more powerful than the, the ones typically built into your operating system. But when you're actually doing statistical analysis, you want to do something other than type directly into the console. What you want is to use what's called an, a code file. So I'm going to go up here to File, New Document, and a new window comes up. What's the purpose of this? Well now, I could type in my calculation commands right here, and there's a few ways to run them. I could highlight this, now I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it in there, I'm just copying and pasting, and press return, so that worked fine. Or maybe there's two different things I wanted to do. First I wanted to add 4 and 5, and then I wanted to multiply 5 by 6. So now if I highlight both of these things, again I'm going to go edit, copy, and then I'm going to click to the console, and I'll go edit, paste, press return, and R did both of those things. It added 4 and 5, and it multiplied 5 by 6. Why is this nice? Well, because I can save this file, perhaps I just want to save it on my desktop. Okay, now this is a code file that I can go back to later and remember what I was doing. So if I'm writing a report where I reported the number is 9 and 30 and someone says, how did you get that? I can go back to my code file and discover that I got it by running this code. Similarly, I can go back to something like this, and I could highlight this and copy and paste. Now copying and pasting is not the only way to run code that's stored in a code file like this. Much easier is to highlight the code the way I did just there, and if I'm on a Mac, I want to type, hold down, the, hold down the command key and then press enter, and it'll automatically run that code. If I'm on a PC, I want to highlight it and I want to do control R. Even easier, if I only want to want to run one line of code, note that all I have to do is put my cursor, put my cursor on this line right here, and the line is automatically highlighted in gray. It's not selected. When I select this with my cursor, it turns blue. But if I just leave my cursor there blinking, it's gray. That's actually enough. If this is highlighted in gray because my cursor is blinking there, and I hold down the command key and press return, that code is automatically sent over here to the console. So that's one another very easy way to run code. If you look closely, you can see that in this code file, there are some colors being used. The names of the objects are black. The numbers themselves are in green. These arrows on the plus signs, the multiplication signs are in blue. What, the, what R is doing for me using these Mac defaults is um, differentiating between different characters that I'm typing here, and that can be very helpful as you code to be able to see which things are the numbers, which things are the names, etc. I'm easily using color. Um, errors will come up in red. Here you can see this is blue and black. Um, but if I do something that doesn't work, for example, if I try to add the number 14 to my last name, I'll get an error, and that will come up in red. This is telling me I have a non-numeric argument. In other words, I tried to add the word Pachaniac to the word to the number 14. This is what I mean when I say that on a PC, the defaults for R are not so great. This kind of coloring of the text that you see in this window here will not come up automatically in R on a PC unless you also download RStudio. Um, and that's, again, why I recommend RStudio for a PC. On a Mac, it's not as important to download RStudio because you do have this automatic default.